so vision and goals. Um, the last time, I believe you projected that you would get uh, 10. Um, what does, who, Juana, what was your score? So I have Anybody have a different? Zero. Zero for vision and goals? Yes. Because? Um, because we chose not to go back out to the community in the last 36 months to listen to vision and values. OK. Anyone disagree with that? Why not disagree, but I think we, there was consensus that we weren't going to do that. I mean, I think it would be it was different a, if there was an expectation that it needed to be done and we just didn't do it, versus the consensus that we were not at a point where that was something that we felt needed to be done, which I think is the distinction that I would draw. But I'm happy to defer if I'm off base on that. I would agree with that statement. We all were in agreement that that we were foregoing that, but it was still not completed. So I just don't know how rigid we are in that Vig process. Uh, are any of your, okay, go ahead. Yeah, no, I just want quick clarity. So this is what threw me off because I seen the zeros April through June, but I when I seen projected July, I messed I messed up. So in going back to that, then I get the zero. So what I did was I was starting us from the projected piece. Oh, I'm sorry. And that's what threw me off. So that's why I kept it 10. But if we're if I'm looking from April through June and just basing it from that, then I understand where you're yeah, coming our from. Our actual last last evaluation was zero. We projected that we would okay. be at 10, but in between that time we chose to not. So then I would still agree with the zero then. And now that I, I have that, I had the wrong, I was going off of the projected. I agree with the zero also. Okay. Okay. All right, is there anything, yes. um, and are there any items on vision and goals that you would like to, uh, so I suspect then you'll stay at a zero, but are there any additional item because you will not go out to the community in the next three months, um, are there any items that you would like to tackle uh, that you believe you could probably not on that one. Okay, let's move on. Sorry, I don't think there's anything else that you, that there is to do on that page. Um, v values and guardrails. Zero. Any disagreement with that? Yeah, zero. Okay. And then monitoring and, a, are we good with zero? Anybody? I'm just going to keep moving because it sounds like we're yeah. going to mm -hmm. speed through this. For right. the same reason, yes. For the same reason. The yeah. same same reason. reason. Okay. Um, <clears throat> monitoring and accountability. Zero. Zero. Because what are you not? Okay. Not the evaluation because of the evaluation of the superintendent, that, that piece. We're behind on that and then we're not publicly sharing. Is this the one we're time tracking is? This is, yeah, monitoring and, yeah. and accountability. Uh, we aren't tracking our time, so we don't know if we're meeting the 10% mm -hmm. of board authorized time. So, um, yeah, but Jackie, you had mentioned we're not following the calendar. Can you? The superintendent evaluation. Oh, the superintendent evaluation, not the monitoring calendar, though. The, sorry, the implementation timeline. Implementation timeline. Okay, so that's not a part of. Yes, thank you. Gotcha. Yep, I would agree with that. But yeah, but monitoring calendar we have been following. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think the only thing that we're not, we don't have data on, so we can't get a ten. Is that ten percent value? Would everybody else agree? Do we have an easy tracking for our interim goal monitoring? It's on the monitoring calendar. Oh, okay. It's on there clearly if we've achieved it or not. If we've... 
Can you school restate the question? has not achieved any of its interim goals in a previous 12 month period. Oh, gotcha. That's not on the calendar. The calendar is just when it occurs. Mm -hmm. So, do we have an easy way to track that to see if we're achieving that or not? I can't think off the top of my head if we have achieved no. one. We used to have the Tableau dashboards. And are those being updated with the new goals and guardrails? They haven't been. They can be. I'm just thinking of easy, again, keeping it simple so we don't have to dig through and figure out if we've achieved an interim goal in the last 12 months or not. We have, but I can pull that together if that's helpful. Okay. So zero on that. Um, I would say that we could get to a 10 by our next Okay. With Rosie um, starting to assist us with time assessments. And I will commit to calibrating that with you. Mm -hmm. All right. So a zero now, projected 10 next mm -hmm. time. Um, communication and collaboration. Zero. Zero. And for the same reason, we're not tracking our use of time. Okay. So that, so then by next, any disagreement with that? I'm just counting on you all to shout out if there's something different. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you anticipate for next quarter? One. 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 Okay. Um, the one thing I would like to ask uh, is if there are any other items, even if you're going to hit one, um, I encourage looking at the columns, the two other columns, the five and the 10, to see if there's anything else that you want to, um, that you haven't met that you might also want to prioritize in the next three months to accomplish just thinking that this is not completely linear. Um, I would say then we could probably get to five then, because I think we're meeting everything in the five column. So yeah. OK. So five for the projected for next next time on that. Um, unity and trust. One. I had a set of three. So what? Um, we, no, that's okay. I feel like it was something about. Yeah, I don't, this ethics and conflicts, there's one about campaign contributions. Um, See that, that third? Yeah, the, the board has included language in its ethics and conflicts of interest statement requiring that board members fully recuse themselves from matters involving individuals or organizations. Who made can I thought that was in our statement. If there's another way with it where it's absorbed, mm -hmm. absorbed, I just don't remember us having that. Come. That was just stuff that was in the context of interest statement and all. I feel like we've had this conversation before. Mm -hmm. I can pull up um, that document while we go to the next one. January. January, January one. Um, the, one, the one thing that I would encourage everyone to look at just at this moment, uh, rather than moving right on to continuous improvement, is um, in that Mastering Student Outcomes Focus uh, column, I think uh, ticking down those, um, and this is where having the superintendent here as well. Um, first of all, the board unanimously agreed during the most recent self-evaluation that all board members adhered to all policies governing board operating procedures during the previous evaluation period. Um, just being able to 
check that box. Uh, and that's something that you all need to agree on. Um, the second one, all board members and the superintendent agreed during the most recent self-evaluation that none of the board members have given operational advice or instructions to staff members. So being cognizant of that and being able to agree on that uh, is um, something you want to review. Uh, board members memorizing all of the board's goals and their current status. And then finally, um, well, the, the final one in that column is scoring an 80 or higher. But, but I think those, those first three, being cognizant of those no matter, no matter what is, no matter what column you're actually scoring in is, is an important piece to be looking at each evaluation. For me, it would be helpful of like where are we exactly with all of our goals if it was in a dashboard setting. Sometimes they all blur together. And you know what? That, I think we get to that in this continuous improvement. Right, to memorize my current status. Oh, to memorize. Yeah. 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 So just lifting those up, um, we can move on to continuous improvement. Kim, are you still looking that up? I do have it. <clears throat> and um, I disclose any and all real or perceived conflicts of interest to that end I recognize that there must be no self-dealing or any conduct of private business or personal services between any board member and the organization except as procedurally controlled to assure openness, competitive opportunity, and equal access to inside information. I hereby disclose the following organizations of which I am or members of my immediate family are a member or director and which may be a direct potential or have the appearance of a conflict of interest. Um, you list said organizations. Um, I further state that I agree to abide by the conflict of interest policy for the board of directors for the Des Moines Independent um, as it pertains and it lists Iowa law policy 1.6. So if we go back to... That was the conflict of interest form, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, so so in your governance policy manual is where where you'd oh, be I'm, looking for okay. for whether or not it says it says that. What was that one they were looking at? Which number it was is that? The can't, it's the campaign contribution. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's, I mean, yeah, I'm not trying to be nitpicky. I'm just wondering if it needs to be written in the board governance that you disclose all of that or if signing the form, which basically says it is sufficient. <laughs> For matters involving individuals or organizations who made campaign contributions to them. Um, <laughs> under four point nine. Thank you. 4.9.2.F.2. Either A or B, C or D. Um, lease property shall not enter into contact, contract financial transaction where the conflict of interest defined by this board exists. Conflict of interest disclosure statement. 
Yeah, I mean, I think, Kim, the question is, does that meet, I guess, ours, um, our smell test? And does it need to specifically call out? I mean, is it implied that a campaign contribution is a conflict of interest, or do you actually need to specifically state that? I mean, it says it in here. Yeah. I, I personally wonder about someone who's made a, I guess this is arguing the content, but I think solicited or unsolicited someone who's made a $25 campaign contribution to my campaign is disclosed when I submit all of my information to the state. If I believe that that poses a conflict at this table, then it's on me to raise that. Uh, but if I don't, um, it's already been disclosed as part of my campaign disclosure. So I guess I might push back a little bit on whether or not That's we agree that that applies. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm comfortable either way, but it'll hold us up each time if right. we don't just make a decision on it. Yeah. yeah. And I would you like to draft that. something that would be more specific? No. I, I'm just, I think I'm just pointing out that if that's how we score ourselves, we're never going to hit the score. Yeah, we'll never hit it. Yeah. Right. So, so, so I feel it, like our conflict yeah. of interest, I, I think what Terry's saying and our conflict of interest policy is sufficient. You do agree, okay. Yeah. So yeah, so you're accurate in that it, you can choose not to do that, however, then you'll just choose not to score beyond one in that category. You can do everything else but that, but so for the purpose of that. So change the scores, is what you're saying. I'm saying, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, and it's a choice. The, I think that was the first proposal. Was that your <laughs> Yeah, and when we look at the, the things that, that <laughs> have the biggest impact on moving student outcomes or yeah. this is one of the lower yeah. items of impact or... If we get really good, then we can come back. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, we want to get to 100, we can debate this one until the cows come. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, so you're good with, you're at one, good with one. Yep. Um, and then finally... I would, I, I would challenge student outcomes, focus governance on that. On that one. I, I think you're not the only one. Yeah. So, I don't think that that is congruent with what we believe to be uh, the appropriate level of trust that we need to maintain when it comes to transparency, since it's already fully and completely disclosed. Mm -hmm. I and also that, think that we're different. I think each district is different. If you think about something, how things go in Texas or places where people are paid, like we are an unpaid, I just feel like each state and each community has a unique situation when it comes to campaign ethics and finance that maybe it doesn't apply everywhere. Yeah, gotcha. Can I ask a clarifying question? Mm -hmm. So the way that this is currently written mm -hmm. and you know how endorsements work in the city of Des Moines. Typically, mm -hmm. um, um, candidates will look for endorsements, with, which also comes with a monetary value associated with it. Um, so is the intent to say that that endorsement would have to be accepted without the monetary contribution to a campaign? Are you talking about DMEA or something? Mm-hmm. So Am I it's, reading that? It, it's, um, Am I reading too it, much into that? Uh, it's about campaign contributions. So um, typically it's financial. You could, I suppose, argue that a contribution is in kind as well. Um, the rationale behind this is uh, kind of that pay-to-play um, type mindset, which is a, a conflict in on plenty of boards, not suggesting it is here, but that's the rationale rationale for having this in the framework. So um, I think right now we're creating a solution to the problem. Yeah, I just was yeah. wanting and, clarification. And and I think um, 
I think that's accurate. And I think also, uh, also being mindful though that policies you make now are also for future members who sit at the board. So um, again, your your call, but I think um, that can be well. And we've if it's seen you decide this. To do. Yeah, we've seen this impact boards that are n not very far away from us. So. Um, I think if you feel strongly about it, let's do something about it. I'm okay with where it's at right now, but perhaps something to discuss. Mm -hmm. Just knowing what types of contributions have been made in the very um, near metro areas. True. Good point. It's a good point. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So, you, so that'll be a future. Continue thinking on that uh, for another time. Uh, continuous improvement. Zero. 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 And mm -hmm. projected. One. And that uh, goes back to that um, tracking of time use and then asking the superintendent and his staff to track. Wait, am I in the right spot? Yeah, their yep. time. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's something that's kind of been on the to-do list for a while. Yeah, and that um, just, to know, just to note that that is tracking, um, staff tracking of time is a big lift. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, that's something we can definitely talk about starting, though, if that's the will of the board. Can I ask a question that's maybe off this, but back to your initial sort of what you were talking about, about the disclosure of campaign donations? Do we all have access to each other's conflict of interest forms? Like, how would we hold someone accountable? They're in Should board they, docs. They're in board docs. They are. OK, so yeah. it's up to all of us to hold each other accountable. I mean, we should yeah. hold ourselves, but I'm just trying to think about some of those potential. We have an election coming. Who knows, right? So like, how do we prepare now to make sure that accountabilities are in place? Yeah, and I will say Kelly and I have signed updated agreements since last January. I don't know that those have been added to board docs, but um, I think, yeah, it is our own, like if we're, we are signing mm -hmm. to it to hold ourselves accountable. So I think that, I think that the bigger question is um, when we believe there is a conflict that is not declared, mm -hmm. what is our process for calling that out? And I don't know that there's anything in our board policies that's... Yeah, I think it's a concern with board member performance. Yeah. It, it is in, in here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it in there? Oh, there okay. it is. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, yep. All right. Okay. Um, what did we say for continuous improvement at zero? zero. Um, for next time, did we say still... One. one. Oh, we're going to go to one. Okay. Um, and then uh, the one thing that I wanted to mention on the continuous improvement um, that third item under meeting student outcomes focus, the third column, the board has continuously updated the status and targets of all goals, guardrails, and interim goals and guardrails, and publicly displays them in the room in which the board most frequently holds regularly scheduled oh. board meetings. Oh. Nope. Ooh. Yeah. If we had like a dashboard, would that be sufficient or not? <laughs> no. Publicly well, displays them in the yeah. room. Yeah. Yeah. So having right. something. Right. We could put them up there, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that would be something to... Can I hold my hand, arm in the shape of a... I could just stand and hold on during the meeting. <laughs> yes. And just go like this. But digital would be better. <laughs> so then you don't have to... Yeah. It's, so that way, that's um, something that will keep them all in, keep them in your right. brain too. Okay. Yeah. And then, so, and then the rest of that is also around hosting those um, sessions on student outcomes focused governance, getting students involved in hosting those sessions, um, all of those things that you can be looking into in the next, in those next columns over the next several months to happen, especially we, as you're 
going. Yeah. We were late yeah, re with regards to when we were supposed to do this on our yeah. timeline. So how does that impact our next? Does everything shift by th by from here by three months? Or do I would will we conduct this again in January? No. I okay. think um, project this January uh, present to March is what I have for the projected. Okay. So Jan your next quarter, it, it, this, yeah, but treating this as almost the end of December because you're not, I, yeah. You, yeah. That would be my recommendation. And then you're, then you'll be on a quarterly January, February, March, April, yeah. May, June. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, if that's um, acceptable. I it's not a part of our evaluation, but I think it's something that's critical to our success, and that's um, our implementation timeline and staying um, accountable to that. So I know that with other districts that um, the council works with, there's um, a monthly check-in regarding that implementation. Is it a monthly check-in? Yeah. Typically, can we make Typically, sure that that I gets on the come, come to every agenda planning? So that should be included in part of agenda planning, and that's that's when we okay. should be like checking to see if there's anything that is on the implementation timeline that should be plugged okay. into the agenda. Okay, either for the upcoming one or to be thinking about it down the line. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So. Would it be helpful to, in the agenda items themselves, identify the item or a link to the item on our implementation timeline? Would that be helpful to the board to know that this item was being accomplished or was a part of the work that we set out to do? And I think, I think part of your process could also be just to either do that or um, as part of your uh, items of privilege or part of your information items have um, somewhere on the agenda okay. that what do we have coming up? I mean, there's various processes that you all could decide to, yeah. that it's you could with the public. Yeah, yeah. decide to put into place. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep. Anything else? Anything else? So right. the quarterly schedule will be um, March, September, and December, then move forward for our board quarterly self-evaluation. We'll put that on whatever our calendar for the year is. Yeah. And it might be helpful, too, to plug the their quarterly evaluations into that monitoring calendar, the overall, the oh, yeah. goal and guardrail monitoring calendar. Just throw those right in there, and then that'll... Hopefully, also keep everybody mindful of when your next quarterly evaluation is. And it is a, um, just to keep in mind, it is uh, we'll try to keep this going, moving forward, making sure that the board and superintendent that it's a group, a go full governing team activity, um, just so everyone knows out front. All right. Not, no, just let, let me know if you have any questions. I um, Also, your monitoring session, I'm happy to review some of that as well with anyone or submit any information. Yeah, go back over it. All right, okay. Thank you, everyone. Good meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.